Can you beat Dragon Age Inquisition without using attacks? Just a few days ago, I found out this lovely little trick, which allows you to destroy absolutely everything by doing nothing. So I was thinking about doing whole new run to see if I can beat the game without attacks. Alright, let's find out. Starting off with playing the mage, which is really important for this playthrough, and choosing the hard difficulty for the beginning. Look, I'm not a person that takes the easy way, but playing in Nightmare just takes way more time to progress. I'm just being lazy, and I'm gonna change it to Nightmare once we get out of the hinterlands. Since I'm not a fan of character creation, I'll just pick some random guy and get started. Before we jump into the game, here's today's plan. I won't be using any attacks as the Inquisitor, which includes basic attacks, offensive spells, and throwables. I absolutely wanted to beat the game with no attacks for all party members, but that is basically impossible, since you have very limited resources and abilities in the early game, so I'll still have to rely on the AI to do the attacking for the first part of the game, and next, no golden nug of course, meaning I can't have the overpower and game schematics, but I'll use the ones I can find in this game. And here we are at the Frostback Mountains, and I'm on the journey of saving the world with a powerful mark on my hand. Shortly we encounter our first fight. This almost ruined my day. As in this tutorial, the game forces you to make an attack before you can do anything else. It's my challenge gonna fail before it begins. Then I realized I can press the surge button to cancel the attack immediately. That was close. At this point, Cassandra was perfectly capable of handling herself. After the fight was over, I remembered the trial options, and I turned on as many of them as I possibly could. After we defeated the Fae Rift, Solus and Varric joined the team, and then we just ran past everything, cause experience, levels, abilities, none of them matters. The only thing that matters is we need to reach Skyhold as soon as possible. At the Temple of the Sacred Ashes, we encounter our first boss fight. This was the really tough one. I had to constantly micromanage every movement for the stupid AI, casting barriers, disrupting rifts, and pulling them back up when they fell, while I still had to run for my life. As I was getting better and better with my mark, I finally managed to close the rift. In Haven, the Inquisition was officially founded, and Cassandra insisted they needed me to lead the Inquisition. So be it. Next up, we're heading to the Hinterlands, where we need to end the war between the Mages and Templars. This was no easy task at this point. The Mages seemed to have unlimited area, and the Templars also had a ton of guard, which took me 3 minutes to kill one promoted enemy. In order to proceed with the main quest, you need full power before you can get out of the Hinterlands. To make matters worse, my Inquisitor wasn't allowed to attack, so we were picking the easy targets, the Fae Rift. Also, by setting up a few camps, we finally got the precious power we need. Taking a trip to the Val Royal just used up all my power and gave me nothing in return, except for two new storylines, one of which cost you another 15 power to get access to. Guess I'm gonna stuck in the hinterlands for a while. At least now, I was able to recruit another mage ally to replace Varric in the team. The rogues are just dead ways in the early game. After hours and hours of side quest grinding, we finally made our way into the Theron Fall Redoubt. The fight with the Red Templars was extremely hard, as I wasn't using any crafted weapons or armor. The whole party could basically die in one explosive shot, even with full barrier. But after one lucky run, where the Templars were focusing on our fellow ally, we were able to make it through. When fighting the enemy demon, my party just kept dying and they couldn't use the healing potion cause they only heal one health. The enemy demon just kept running away every time we got close to him. After countless times of falling and reviving, we finally beat him. Corypheus didn't seem to be happy about us closing the rift and launching on the swords when we were celebrating the victory. This part of the fight wasn't that hard, as long as you have your mages keep casting the ice mine and the winter's grass. At the last fight, I only turned the trebuchet a few rounds at a time and stopped when the mob started to spawn. This way you wouldn't get overwhelmed by the enemies. As for the boss fight, I pull my team together and just tank every attack. Since we got 3 mages, we can cast lots of barriers. If the mobs targeted me, I'll just distract them by running in circles, and this trick definitely worked. 
Corypheus showed up and kept talking nonsense instead of just killing me, which gave me the chance to get away. In the tunnel, I was all by myself, and there were demons waiting ahead. How the hell am I supposed to get through without using a tech? Well, I tried a few tricks. First, I baited them into destroying the barricades. But even if they did, there is still an invisible wall stopping you from getting through. But I still got one last trick up my sleeve, the Stormbringer. For the most part, this ability is considered useless, I believe, but not under this situation. If you take a look at the description, it says, When you're in combat, the lightning will periodically strike a random nearby target with a cooldown of 15 seconds. Say, if you manage to hide in a safe place, the storm is eventually gonna destroy everything for you. So I hid in this little spot and waited for them to be slowly destroyed. It finally took me 20 minutes to wipe them out. Now the path is clear, time to rejoin my people. And next, we were in Skyhole. Here's where the fun begins. That bill I used in the tunnel of Haven was just the 1.0 version. Since we were in Skyhole already, we could have access to higher level materials, schematics, masterworks, meaning we could perfect this bill as we pleased. So we went to the exalted plains for one really important item. Head to the south of the map and you'll find this cave. Head inside, there's this lovely item, the Ring of Doubt. What it does is, when you're not attacking during combat, you automatically end the stealth. When you attack from stealth, you automatically critical hit. With that said, your Stormbringer will still hit random targets while you're in stealth, and it doesn't break it. Unfortunately, the strike will not critical hit. But anyway, you can now destroy everything by just standing there. One character is clearly not enough. That's why I chose to play the mage. Thus, we can have a team of 4 mages. Meaning you get 4 lightning strikes every 15 seconds. That's a lot of DPS increase compared to 1. But what about the ring of doubt you might ask? You only have 1. How do you put it on all of the mages? The lovely duplication glitch, of course. Just put the ring in this magical chest in Skyhole. Withdraw it by pressing A and B at the same time. Perform this trick 4 times. Then you have 4 rings of doubt. I can't wait to test this on the mobs. But before you go, don't forget the bell of the stone pact. Which increases your lightning damage by 100%. You can get it by finishing this war table mission with Josephine. We're back in the hinterlands again. In order to initiate the Stormbringer, you gotta attack or be attacked. Since attacking is not an option today, so I just lure the mobs into attacking me. And there you go. Now we wait and see. Get a cup of tea if you like. Or even go out for a walk. When you come back, the team should destroy everything for you. Or be destroyed if this happens to you. I had absolutely no clue what just happened to me until I realized it was all because of this guy. It's got the perception ability, which could break your stealth and get your squad killed. Should definitely watch out for this little thing when you're out in the field. It's time to upgrade our gears. The Empress, the Lion, is the perfect place to form the tier 3 materials. We definitely shouldn't be here at this point, for the Red Templars could easily one-shot your squad. But as long as you take this camp, you'll have access to unlimited materials. These guys were really tough and it took me nearly an hour to wipe them out. But trust me, it was all worth it. One hour later. After you set up the camp, you can start collecting Dawnstones and Silver Eyes. And you might want to ignore the Templars a Along the way, since you're in stealth, you could get some Fate Touch version if you're lucky. After you're done, just leave the map and come back. All of the materials should respawn. Do this trick for two runs, and you should be ready to craft your weapons. Now with the schematic of Blade of Tadarian, which you can find from one of the War Table missions, you're able to craft a decent weapon. As for the masterwork, the Hidden Blade is no doubt the best one for this build. Once you craft your weapon, don't forget to split it into four. You know how it works. As for the armor, any crappy schematics will do. I'll just use this one from one of the DLCs. This tier 1 masterwork was all I had, which should be fine. When Hidden Blade procs in combat, it's very likely to trigger the Immolation too. Or the other way around, if the melee hits multiple targets, this is a lot of damage increase. 
Next, I brought my extremely underpowered team into the adamant fortress. In here, you encounter a few pride demons. The most annoying thing about this is they have electricity resistance, which would be incredibly hard to kill. But fortunately, we could just run past all of them, including one in the ceremony site. And I just kept running and ignore everything, because now we don't need any experience levels anymore. We also ran past everything within the fate. Except for a few fights that you couldn't skip. Bosses are much trickier though, as they mostly have the perception ability and you just can't hide near them without being spotted. But if you manage to keep your distance, you'll still be able to cheese them to death. Except you have to keep managing the position for your whole team. I grow fat on your fear. There's not much to talk about for the Winter Palace part. If you're into the lore of Dragon Age, you should enjoy this part of the game much more than I do. Since I'm not a lore guy, I just skip every dialogue and run past most of the combat. At the Grand Duchess fight, I just cheesed her to death as always, and she didn't even know how she died. In the temple of Mathal, Morrigan was being bullied by a bunch of Venatories, and all I did was just stood there and watched. I felt so bad about this, poor Morrigan. But you're a powerful witch. You can make it out in one piece, I believe. You know what's the best part of this spell? You can even change your weapons during combat. Since you're in stealth, the game probably thinks of you as unengaged. Thus, you're allowed to do things just like outside the combat. If the mobs are vulnerable to fire, just change your weapon to the fire staff, and this would absolutely make it a lot easier. Cause the hidden blades deal damage according to your weapon's element. If it's a fire staff, it inflicts fire damage. When fighting Calpurnia, we just sneak around like we always do and let the thunder do its job. Thanks to this elf who kept her busy, we were able to hide in the corner without being spotted. After I took a shower and came back, the fight was over. As the reward of being the tank for the team, I let Morrigan drink the water from the Well of Sorrows. Then Corypheus wouldn't leave us alone. I'm done hiding. As of now, I can destroy anything without even moving my fingertip. As you can see, Corypheus is absolutely no match for me, and he couldn't even touch me. While I can strike him as I please, I shouldn't have waited this long to take on him. He's not gonna let me finish him here, so he bailed. On the upper floor, I just repeat this trick over and over. Corypheus finally couldn't take it anymore and decided to call for help, a dragon. But that didn't scare me. I sneaked behind his back and kept kicking his butt for 5 minutes until it fell down. On the top floor, Corypheus finally lost it and started to launch laser attacks. I had to keep dodging his attacks by hiding behind a pillar, but he just wouldn't stop moving. It took me a while. We got it done anyway. So can you beat Dragon Age Inquisition without attacks? Technically, you can't. But can you kill everything without using attacks? Yes, this game has a decent combat system. Even today, I can still find new stuff from time to time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like. This is the best way to help my channel or subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next video.